Hello everybody and welcome to Planet Sky FF, the weekly show around Sky fantasy football that revolves around £50,000, but it doesn't anymore. Well it might, don't be so uh, harsh. At some point someone is going to get that £50,000. Well not necessarily. Did you get through in the cup? Just that no, I went out. I went Even out. that £1,000 has been snatched I went away. Out. The, the Leicester Monday night uh, killed me, I don't, obviously did, I don't did, know did what. Did the other guy own Vardy? I've no idea what he oh, had, okay. but yeah, he killed me. I'd, I'd finished on 80-something, but he'd finished on over 100. Wow. So, yeah, it was finished. Yeah. But then I don't know what they're planning to do with that now. Is it? I mean, FPL's doing coin tosses, isn't it? Oh, that's true. <laughs> Which, Virtual I mean, sod, coin tosses. Sod that for a joke. Yeah. But, yeah. That's all right. I've got plans for that competition next year, or if we ever play football ever again, <laughs> in terms of what I would do with that. But, mm. yeah, we we are in limbo. This, unfortunately, may well be our last Sky podcast for a while. I have exciting plans for what we might do on Wednesday, but I can't tell you yet. What uh, What's the latest in terms of the football world and all that? Mm. Sorry, you caught me with a mouthful. Oh, um, right. We know, obviously, from what we'd very much expected from the UEFA meeting yesterday, that European Championships have been moved to the summer of next year, 2021. Yep. We also know from leaked... It's not so much leaked, but there is a an agreement in place that domestic leagues will try and complete their calendar by June 30th, which is obviously the date when the majority of out-of-contract players will obviously have contracts running out. And it also kind of gives a, a slight buffer before Europa and Champions League preliminary rounds are due to begin. There is some talk to that the preliminary rounds for those competitions may look very different i did fag packet maths and believe that to complete the domestic season by june 30th on the assumption that uh, manchester united could have the most number of fixtures left which is a total of 16 and that's on the basis that european became one leg tires and obviously, if they made the FA Cup final, they could have 16 games remaining. Therefore, you need uh, at least eight full weekends. It would mean the Premier League would need to resume, in my opinion, no later than May the 2nd. However, the postponed international schedule from March has been rearranged for early in June. So that would potentially need to fit in as well, which means the Premier League would then need to start two weeks earlier than that May 2nd date, which suddenly means we'd be resuming football, I believe, by April the 17th to complete the season. And I'm afraid to say that is not going to happen. Yeah, unless it's behind closed doors, I can't see it happening. I can't see mid-April or even early May, even behind closed doors, I can't see. I think we might get to a situation where perhaps by June or July, we're in that position where behind closed doors could be a completion I can't see attendees of I think attending football again I'd say even August is unlikely right now on the way it's going I'm of a a different opinion actually to be honest I think it'll be sooner yeah Um, but I'm also quite bullish in terms of I don't believe that there there will be a lockdown maybe I don't believe there should be a lockdown that's uh, kind of tinting my view on this a little bit Um, I think it'll be sooner but let's see I mean, the numbers are still going up, right, in terms of the number of people contracting the virus and dying, uh, sadly. So whilst it's, it's on an upward s- slope... We're not doing anything. We're not making any decisions. The problem in relation to football, it's all well and good saying play it behind closed doors. However, all it needs is one Mikel Arteta, one Callum Hudson-Odoi, yeah. and we're, football's off again. Yeah, That's the issue. Did you see uh, there's still a North London derby happening on Friday night? I have seen, yeah, the Planet FPL derby has been arranged between Mikel Antonio and Ryan Sessegnon. Are they streaming it on Twitch or something? I don't know, Game of FIFA apparently. 
and <laughs> there's been some bizarre goings on in social media. Oh dear. I see Le- Leighton Orient have organised this FIFA competition, haven't they? It was 128 teams going into it. I mean, like Andros Townsend's representing Crystal Palace. Really? It's kind of cool, but loads of clubs have pulled out because the the Sun Dream team is part of the association. <laughs> They're sponsoring it, basically. Wow. So a load of clubs have gone, no, we ain't associating with that shit. <laughs> we can <couldn't> pull out. <laughs> Mad. But yeah, we've seen uh, Southampton and Man City playing noughts and crosses. We've seen Bayer Leverkusen challenge and lose to everybody at Connect Four. Um, there's lots of social media bants going on. Um, your life's going on, isn't it? I think for, for football, anything we were to predict right now would be nothing more than that mm. would be a prediction. I did think at the start of the week, I'll be honest with you and I'll be honest with the listeners, I did think at the start of the week... The show will go on. We can just keep talking and keep talking. It's getting harder when we're still so uncertain. Now, look at this. The, you put a tweet out. We asked for questions for Sky. The Sky show never gets a lot of questions because there's less players, the, the less people in the community. Uh, we're down to seven questions now. That's okay. A lot of which people is, have switched which is off. good, but it still is a sign of what's happening out there. Um, people are just less and less and less interested. Our show will go on. It's just going to look a little bit different from next week. And following the Premier League announcement tomorrow, we will plan a schedule. Um, ah, sod it. Wednesdays is likely to become quiz day, basically. Probably yeah. will be yeah. for all you quiz buffs out there. Uh, let's look at some of these questions Come that we've on had from, from people. Uh, Ian A. Davis at Ian A. Davies 4. How are you, Ian? Hope you're well. Uh, which game have you preferred, Sky or FPL? Did the prize money give you extra motivation to succeed? Is Sky easier due to the lack of foreign national, such as the Indian and Norwegian players? Mm. And rate your best and worst signings over the year. What is your biggest regret? Biggest regret? To start with, that would be not being aggressive enough early on, taking advantage of a couple of three for ones, um, being insistent that I would go to the first overhaul with no transfers. I made one enforced of Allison to Edison, yeah. but otherwise didn't make any, which meant I'd sat in there with some seriously underperforming players. Sure. Now, if the reason season restarts and you've got all these transfers and we're left with so many match days because like, it's so spread, you're yeah. going to be in a king position there. Well, I've got what fourteen left. Yeah. So yes, I'm. Should the I mean that's circumstance restart. more than anything else? Should should the season restart? I'm obviously in a in a strong position. I ended up not particularly gambling on Manchester City the previous weekend. I only went with the one player in in Otamendi. Um, I obviously was going to power into West Ham and, and Wolves for the Sunday that's gone. That obviously didn't happen either. So You will at some point, though. I've still got three Liverpool players sitting in the squad. The only injury I currently have is obviously Ricardo Pereira's out for the season, but it was someone that I was probably moving on anyway. So I feel in a strong position from that perspective. On In terms of regrets, it's very difficult to analyse because one of the messages I've been saying all season is, I'll tell you when it's done. Mm. Because I don't really know until I can look at that rank at the end of the year and then go back and completely reanalyze. Then I don't really know as a as a beginner to the game. The the one thing that stays with me is is that I wasn't aggressive enough at the start, which is why I've always been playing catch up and yeah. and I'd say not in the top thousand at the moment. I'm ranked about twelve hundred or or so. What were the other points in there? So I think I regret not taking it seriously. Uh, <laughs> it sounds stupid. I think if I had done. Nothing other than had a captain on every match day, which I haven't. And the transfers that I planned to do, just done them rather than forget to log in and make them. I reckon I'd be in and around the top two, three K just by just by doing that compared to what I haven't done. So um, as we get closer towards the end of the season, I'm actually what could have been. I do regret a little bit more Um, in terms of your best and worst signings over the year. Oh, I think getting Mane when I did a, a couple of weeks ago really paid because he, in the last game that they played, outperformed Salah and captaining him was um, a real touch. Bulldog as well. George Bulldog for me has been so consistent since yeah. I've owned him. He's been very, very good. So those are the two that are best. Pookie, when I gambled probably pre the Watford fixture early in the season, it was a three mm. for one, but it wasn't a lot that came out of it return-wise. 
And it felt like, I guess because I had transfers in hand already at that stage, it felt like a move warranted. I did pick up like a shot bonus when I captained him in that in that Watford fixture. But I think going back, it might have been one that I'd looked at and gone, do you know what, for this game, it's just not worth it. Crack on, save that extra transfer. Um, best signings? I feel like I obviously missed out on the all the Liverpool halls in mm. terms of like the Leicester 4-0. Um then the games afterwards and and then it was it was late coming back on once that West Ham fixture had been rearranged towards the end of January. So there was some regret in that, but then the fury to get rid before they went to the Club World Cup wasn't incorrect in any way. I think it's what a lot of people did, but so many went straight back. Yeah. To say that Leicester fixture already, or at least uh, I think the following game was Wolves, wasn't it? I mean, that double week with West Ham, some people were on six, seven, eight Liverpool players. A yes. lot. Yeah, mm. I mean, it was it was a, a three for one, two for zeros going at the end there, wasn't there before, mm. and going in towards the mid season break. So everybody I was hammering. My, you into know, them. I think my worst signing has been James Madison. I got him in. I'd had him in FPL. I got him in Sky because he'd done so well for me in FPL, probably around about November time. And then he's gone on to do absolutely nothing. And he did, he's not even a, a tier points magnet really he doesn't really have enough shots or passing to even pick those up I think Madison's been a rubbish sky pick I'll be honest with you I think the one that sat around in a lot of our teams for a long time which was possibly a regret was Mason Mount he sat around too long for sure um was obviously very nicely priced started the season really well came from nowhere and I think a lot of people obviously right to go on and then sort of from match day eight there wasn't a lot of returns from him. Even the shot tiering had calmed down on that. But because of his price point, there wasn't too many places to go. So he kind of just kept sitting there and he was sitting there as a placeholder, sort of hoping it would turn around. I guess another one for me, possible regret might have been Lewis Dunk, who I went to uh, before that Monday night fixture against uh, Crystal Palace in early December and didn't hang around for me very long. So that was almost like a wasted transfer. But not 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 too many on regrets. There was another point in there for me, and as well, wasn't there? So just... uh, he talks about the lack of international players and the prize money. Does it help you succeed? Yeah, hundred percent. Like them so. Scandinavians are dirt clever, aren't they? Mm. And and so are your mates from Asia. Like, yeah, the fact that they can't play this game is definitely <laughs> helpful. Because I think the money helps. I I would like to be like Dan is Sky first, FPL second. I reckon next season that that would change my mindset on it. Sky first, FPL second. <laughs> I think one of the things with with Sky is you can have a bad Saturday and you can very quickly return turn it back round on the Sunday or the Monday night or whatever. If you're captain blanks in FPL on a Saturday, you, you kind of feel like you've lost already, yeah, irrespective Sky of what going. happens, and you, you're stuck with with the team that what what uh, with what you've had. But I guess the flip of that is, in an odd way, FPL is probably a little bit more rewarding. Because on that Sunday in Sky, you can just rip your team up if if you want, if you need to rage it or play about with captaincy, etc. So the fact that you are stuck to more of a structure in in FPL, um, the fact that you can't make if if you've got two free transfers, um, you can if you need to make more, you're taking hits. Whereas you can plan properly and make five transfers in one week in Sky, right? If you're yep. selective enough about it. So it, there's kind of, in an odd way, although Sky has restrictions on transfers, you're you're more restricted in what you do in FPL. So I feel like there's more, FPL feels it still feels a little bit more rewarding because in my opinion, it's more difficult mm. because of part of that as well, the the, the global audience, et cetera. The, the, I mean, price changes I think is massive. W- what we've learned this year is if you just go and be consistent about your play next year in Sky, you can finish top thousand. Yep. I think some people will be looking at the way I've learned the game this year and go, well, James could do very well in this next year. And that's how I feel about it as well. My target as and when next season would start would be first. Mm. Not that anything below that would be a failure, but I'd be going into it and thinking, yeah, that's my target. Whereas It's I'm realistic never, in I'm Sky. Ne- it's, I'm not really, it's not as realistic let, in FPL. Let's, let's, let's not say it's realistic. Let's say it's possible. Yeah. In FPL, I'd be going... The, the way that game's going and evolving and growing, next year I began, well, top 100K is now like the new top, top 10K, 10K, isn't it? Really? So it's getting so much harder. 
And so will Sky as well. I've, I've mentioned in one of the previous pods early in the season that a lot of the very experienced players felt like they were having difficult seasons. And I feel like, and I can't speak for it historically, obviously, but this game is growing as well. And therefore, there will be better and better players. So it's not that easy to suddenly finish into the top 100 because no. the attention that people like no. us, Hub, Joe and Luke from Scout, the game's going to grow domestic, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, for sure. it's, going to, it's going to get harder. Mm. I'm going to read a few of these out together. Uh, the tweet that you put out, James, what have been your favourite uh, highlights from this journey? So whilst I said there were seven questions, there weren't. Some people just put tweets in with their highlights and uh, and uh, thanking us. Um, shout out to Paul, Sky player in FPL. Um, he says, without your initial intention to try the Sky game, he would have never got the chance to speak with us guys. And it's been one of his personal highlights of the year. But we, it's always been great having you on, uh, having you on, Paul, because you're better at this than we are. Um, but he asks before, uh, he's asked before and he's wondering if the answer's changed over time. Do you find that you've developed a different level of patience for Sky that you'll take into other formats in future? No, not necessarily. Fair thing to say is, as we've said before, like actually if it wasn't for Paul, we probably wouldn't be doing this. Yeah. Because Paul certainly... He's one of our first 30s, well, isn't he? he really... The way Paul played FPL last year really kind of brought it to my attention. Paul finished 48th in the world in FPL last year by essentially using a structure that he uses for Sky, which is an incredible achievement. And we invited Paul on during our 30 and 30 series last June. And he, coming out of that, he really convinced me. We did a podcast to say, okay, tell us about Sky. Why should we play? And I went into it kind of thinking, I'm really not sure if I want to be playing two games. I feel like yeah. I've had a couple of unsuccessful FPL seasons. This isn't going to help me. But following that pod, I was like, yeah, we have to do this. Serge. And, and we have... Um, in terms of patience, I feel like, again, my lack of aggression in play of FPL has always been something that's restricted me personally. So I don't feel like this has particularly added anything to my patience. But I, you've been more aggressive in FPL this year than ever. Yeah. You've taken way but more I, hits than ever. Yeah, because I was already at Christmas going, this is shit. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I, I always knew I was going to be patient with this game, particularly as a first season trial, if we can call it that. I already know the, the slightly different things that I would want to do next season in terms of early aggression to get me in a stronger position to then rather than thinking I need to do things differently to other people to get to X, which I haven't particularly done because I'd never set myself a particular target this season. But I'd like to be going hard early next year mm. to get ahead and make other people more worry about what they're going to do to, to catch me, if, for example. So I, I feel like early good placement in the season is is more important than I'd estimated. But in terms of my patience, no, I, I don't think it would be. I, I think I would still w want to leave myself in a position where coming to this end of the, the season, I would still have a lot more transfers than most. Mm. Essentially, I, I would I, double I, what the I average think is. I'm definitely uh, going to be influenced by Sky for next season. The times I've enjoyed both FPO and Sky the most is when my spreadsheet's been up to date and I can look forward and plan. And when it hasn't been, I don't feel like I have a good, clear picture. You can visualise the fixtures and the three for ones and two for ones a lot easier in your head than I can. Um, and I like to see it all laid out. And when I've not had the time to maintain that or keep that up to date, and it's a pain in the ass because every time the fixtures are announced for TV, you have to move them around and change it. It's not a very uh, easily um, automated process. I think um, I've, I've felt better about it. So I think I'll be looking at that more patient approach next season for sure uh, for both FPO and Sky. And I'm going to try and make Sky my, next, my main game next season. Okay, Let's that's see. big. Yeah, I think it's the only way to, to think that I'll take more pride in that. I think to give yourself that realistic chance of doing well in this particular format, you have to be on it. Mm. Newsworthy in terms of understanding the possibilities of, of what can go, what can't go. I mean, if you look at, say, a squad structure of what may happen when we restart, we would all be guessing the postponed fixtures for, say, this weekend could, if we get a restart, in theory, suddenly, as we'd mentioned yesterday become the last day of the season fixtures, mm. possibly. All we can look at right now and go is, well, we know who's likely to have the most fixtures left is Aston Villa and Sheffield United in one way or another. And we know that perhaps because of European and domestic um, 
FA Cup being of other teams, that they may have more odd single game days than perhaps uh, a team like uh, Spurs or West Ham, yeah. who are out of other competitions and therefore are less likely to have single game days. But you can't plan for... <laughs> we don't know. Yeah, it's, of course. It's ridiculous. Shout out to uh, our friend, The Athletic FPL, who uh, mentions the best moment for me on your journey is actually starting the journey, which pushed him to start as well. Uh, enjoyed it a lot this year. We'll all be a force next year. Well, you and him will be. I probably will forget to log in, which is probably true. Um, and and Rob and uh, Benny, Rob Pick and Benny Blanco, both asked the same question that we have talked about, but I'll read both out and we can wrap them up in a nice neat bow. Um, would you do anything different in terms of your transfer strategy next year? In hindsight, did you get the balance of conservative and aggressive right um, despite this coronavirus chaos? And that's coming in from Rob. And Benny also says, in terms of your transfer strategy, what have you learned this season that you can take into next season? Go harder at the start or be more conservative? Definitely more aggressive in terms of three for ones. Yeah. And understanding that opportunities like that Liverpool in January which we didn't necessarily know was going to happen and then obviously what would have happened with Man City last week if we'd have been in a better position is to really take advantage of those and not get too blinded by I'll be able to because one of the things for me was always I will be able to manoeuvre everybody else so much better at the end with the blanks and doubles and that might still be the case in terms of comparison to what perhaps a lot of other people may have in in transfers but yeah the main one remains being aggressive you know looking at it and going only a bit more aggressive I don't think we were that conservative no you're talking about two or three more transfers that might give you two or three better captaincy options that you could have cashed in on no but then looking at say like Kurt Zuma at the start of the season and going it's just it became very evident very quickly that that Chelsea were not going to be keeping clean sheets and his place in the team was going to be very questionable once obviously Tomori had emerged onto the scene and just getting rid of that putting up with John Stones at the start of the season for going yeah okay clean sheet nine pointer against West Ham and then he stayed in my team 0-0-0 game weeks 2-3-4 because I didn't think there were gains by moving to an Otamendi or a Laporte or something different and going back in hindsight and knowing I should have absolutely got off that there and then that's sitting there and leaving him in there for three weeks on three zeros. That's the sort of thing. Well, I kept thinking he might be back in this week. He might be back in next week. And I think that the choices of, say, him and Kurt Zuma early last year and Gilbert at the start, who missed the first, missed the couple, first two yeah. couple of games, then played in game weeks three and four. And obviously got us, a lot of us a captaincy return in game week three against Everton. Mm. But it was it was bad decision making at the start to take gambles it, essentially it's a four week period at the start right don't take gambles in that period for me next year I will be going 11 players that I know are, are probably likely to with no European Cup distractions if if that's how the calendar was to work out where it's weekend 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 like this was get players in or are confirmed starters the likes of Harry Kane's Salah's De Bruyne's or obviously defensively there Van Dyke, Edison these players I know unquestionably are going to play in those first four game weeks. That's crucial. I got blinded in by the Gilbert thing at the start and I did amend that after the first overhaul and have never gone back to one of those cheap defenders because I always felt it would be an escape issue. Yeah. And the problem I had with Gilbert there early on was there was no escape other than Dan Byrne. And was I going to force that before over overhaul? It wasn't. It just wasn't. No, it didn't make sense. At the no, time. so I ended up having to sit on it till the overhaul. So I think I would avoid really cheap options before that first overhaul next year. And then you know, if you come into game week five or whenever it plays out, and we know, yeah, okay, Mason Mount has emerged, for example, then then yeah, he goes into that squad. So I think avoiding cheapies, going no frills at the start would be a real one for me next year. Mm. In terms of things that enjoyed. Journey wise, I think one of the things that really helped me during the season was actually game week one, first day hitting Mo Salah captain, game two taking the gamble to go Harry Kane rather than when a lot of people went Man City. Um, 
And obviously being at Spurs, I'd captained Kane in FPL that week as well, decided to go against Salah. So when Kane scored twice really late and suddenly you're looking at the first week of Sky and going, I've got 60 points here from Kane and Salah. And I know a lot of other people would add exactly the same, but it did make me think, Christ, there's some power here in the captaincies. So that instantly gave got me some in enthusiasm into the game. And you look at it, bloody, I got 11 points from Edison in a 5-0 win at West Ham. Like, how did that happen? Mm. So there were high scores early on that got my enthusiasm into the game. Then I made silly mistakes. Like when we did our second live show and Liverpool and Arsenal was the evening game. Yeah. And I kept in Van Dijk rather than Salah. Yeah. It was just a mistake at mm. that period with no Alisson in goal knowing that they could do that and the way Arsenal so sloppy defensively under Unai Emery. So I know what mistakes were early on. I think early on next year, it's it's to run with and be consistent and kind of go with the ownership, etc. to keep me high early. Whereas I was trying things. I know what I tried and did wrong now. One thing we need to have a, a, a chat about before we wrap up this show is actually FPL. Now from... Um Andy's video last week on Let's Talk FPL, my understanding is that there is still a deadline this weekend. Yes. And so if a lot of people who didn't make a transfer this week now have two, yes. you should be making a transfer this week, unless you want to lose it. In theory, yes. I don't think it's... I'm going to make one. I'm going to make one. I'm going to make one. But I feel it's also a complete waste of time. Because I don't think we'll be starting anytime soon. I think in FPL... It is. I'd rather, like, say you've got a problem of an injured player that you just want to move on or one of your budget players that you want to move on. You may as well get it done while you're going to... Otherwise, you're going to burn the transfer anyway. So uh, for me, for example, getting binning Rico and bringing in Gakia in, fine, done. Doesn't yep. really hurt me. It's my fourth sub. Yep. Uh, th yeah, fine. And I saved myself my These point are probably three, the ones you sort you know, James Madison's hung around for me for a long time. It's probably a time good, to go, mate, that kind it, of thing. Bin it off, yeah. I mm. don't think you should be making moves from from your starting eleven kind know, of thing. Aguero to or Bamiang, that kind of thing. Because no, if no, it no, comes no, around no. and City have got a, we walk, walk back into a city double, for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's ridiculous. Obviously it's, it's the fringe players, your bench players, whatever you can do to just get that extra couple of pips for further down the line. Obviously in Sky. No, don't, don't, Doesn't matter. Don't do anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, yeah. one other thing we should speak about um, is the idea of if we have a void season, what should happen to cash leagues? Have you got any opinion on that? Um, same thing that happens with the league: void them, give everyone their money back, and everyone. Becomes. I strongly believe, and this is probably coming from my betting background over the years, that where money is involved, if an event is not completed, the money should be returned. Yep. I don't think there is any alternative option to that. When 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 you bought into a, a cash league or whatever, when that season started, it was under the rules of 38 transfers. How you begin to work out for Sky particularly, how you begin to work out, <clears throat> oh, he's got 14 transfers left. He's flying, but he's got zero transfers left. You can't give the money to the guy who's no, front, no, who's, no. who's burnt all his transfers and the guy who's 100 points behind has got 14 transfers left because there's every chance that he's going to catch him. Yeah, so FPL is a bit different. FPL is a bit different. And, and the, the only reason I say why FPL is a bit different, I think one idea, and it probably depends how many people you've got in your cash league, but I think what you could potentially do is say those who have already used all their tri chips, say, I don't know, let's just say hypothetically, half of the players have used a triple captain and half of the players haven't and there was no other chips for whatever reason. Work on an average of what those triple captains returned and add that to players who, yeah, who haven't of... used it. Might be one way of doing it. I think for those who've got leagues who haven't had cash involved, might do what you want with it, isn't it? Mm. You probably just settle as it is and say, yeah, well done. There's your little Ashes trophy. Yeah, Crack on with it. I think for where money's involved... Unfortunately, I, I think it has to be voided. Mm. I can't see a way around that. I'm sure that's probably the the take on it that Skybet, who obviously hold on to the cash in these cash leagues formally done within the game, will will take that stance that the money would have to be, as a betting company, it's void. It has to be, right? Yeah. That's how I would see that. Mm -hmm. There we go. Um, so I hope that everybody is staying healthy and safe uh, and that they're not 
scratching at the walls in terms of boredom right now. We'll be back at you tomorrow with Clash of the Correspondents. Um, we have Neil Grover, our Bournemouth correspondent, and Bradley Parker, our Wolves correspondent, talking about um, how the uh, sh- the suspension of games has affected them both top and bottom of the table in Europe League football and what have you. So do tune in for that. And on Friday, James will be streaming by then. Touch wood, fingers crossed. Well, no. The Premier League will have had a meeting um, to tell us that they will be having another meeting in a week's time. <laughs> I suspect it is going to they're be... They're going to kick that can this forward. Is, this is the intention. I, I, I suspect they're going to go with something like the intention will be to restart a roundabouts game week 35 or so, subject to whatever Government. happens. Mm. And I think the likelihood is that will then get pushed back again, unfortunately. Um, tomorrow's podcast, I think, is brilliant. Yep. with Bradley and Neil. I think it's really good. It's not attacked from a fantasy perspective in any way. It's a conversation with two football fans who regularly go and support their club, one challenging near the top of the league and one who's currently in the bottom three. And their insight is brilliant. In terms if, you're of not, if you're not listening to that show for the content, well, you, you're going to listen because you've got nothing else to listen to and nothing else to do. <laughs> Let's be honest, right? So there you go. Just listen to it. <laughs> Um, thanks for tuning in thanks for all the support we'll be back at you next week keep an eye on Twitter at Planet FPL Pod where James will be um, sharing our schedule for next week and the type of stuff we've got for you to look forward to we're working as hard as we can to get you as much useful stuff chat for now be nice to each other cue music man child Fantasy Football Show.